afternoon, everyone. And uh, I would like to thank you all for attending our class for the day. And before anything else, I would like to invite everyone to bow their, head, their heads as we pray. We would like to thank you, loving Heavenly Father, for once again, you giving us the opportunity to see each other through this Zoom meeting. And may bestow to each one of us the wisdom from above so that the things that we'll be learning will continually help us grow in the realms of education. Help each one of us, O oh God, and protect us from any possible harms and dangers. This was in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We pray, brother. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. I will be sharing my screen because we will be... Okay, wait a minute. Okay, there you go. So just for the information of others, I will be recording this, our, what do you call this? Yeah, there you go. Our Zoom class for this afternoon for the sake of those who will be not attending and of course for, for you to have your review later on. So this afternoon, we are now in chapter five of our book and it it is entitled, Tools of Technology for Communication. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so our objectives for this chapter, number one is to convey ideas through oral, audiovisual, and or web-based presentations for different target audiences and in local and global settings using appropriate registers. And the second one is adopt awareness of audience and context in presenting ideas. So the previous chapters have more or less discussed lengthily how technology has evolved over the years and how it has affected communication. In the context of a student's life, Technology now is an integral part in how he navigates through his practical life and his school work. It is now an understatement to say that young people live and breathe technology from the time they wake up to, to sometimes the wee hours of the morning still tinkering with their gadgets. So we cannot say that we will not be needing, we will be not we will not be needing technology in order for us to learn, especially these days that we are having virtual classes. What else? Are using technology in searching for things which will be of good help, something like that. So it's already an understatement that technology will be the breath of uh, every student like you who are participating in this kind of uh, teach, learning. So this chapter will not focus on how technology has invaded the social life of young people, but rather on how it dramatically changed how a student like you deal with school activities and projects. This change goes to the extent of uh, possibility for your simple project to be done on record time and it and it getting the attention of the online community because of your easy access to simple media production tools and applications. So there were already outputs in our class that you finished doing as required in the previous chapters. This time we're going to break down how exactly multimodality should be viewed and in this chapter, in chapter four, you were asked to launch a cost-oriented activity and present it to class. So my question now is, have you done your part? Or were, were you able to visit that particular output that you are to submit? I think that those were the last pictures I have sent in our GC. 
So please uh, make sure to thumbs up when you have uh, at least visited, visited or seen that particular announcement or instruction. Okay, game. Okay, so Aren. So is it readable so far? Yes, sir. Okay. But what exactly is the concept of multimodality? How can this concept help you in making an impression with your teachers that you are an effective communicator? Has multimodality made a student's life, your life, easier or more challenging? Okay, so that's why we're going to answer it this afternoon. So this is the role of technology. Okay, so creating a multimodal text. Okay, the thing that you're viewing right now is an example of a multimodal text. Okay, so the, the center word is multimodal. And of course, you are, as my students, will be using that multimodal with its scope or components. We have the tools, we have the communicate the most, literacy and all. So that's an example of multimodal text. So essentially, when you are asked to communicate in your various general education courses, you are given the chance to tell a story, right? Your stories range from how you understand yourself to how you go about dealing with your personal issues. Sometimes you are even compelled to make sense of local and international issues. Like today, of course, it's still very rampant that we are talking about COVID-19. Okay, it had, actually it, it celebrated or the world celebrated or even just I celebrated the first year anniversary of the COVID-19, but still on its verge of uh, reproduction. <laughs> it's still in existence as of the moment. So this task can be daunting if you refuse to submit to the challenge of adapt adapting to the times by embracing how technology can help you produce multimodal compositions. Okay. So creating multimodal text means, okay, it is a me, means the production of spoken, written, or text in print or digital forms. Okay, from the word multi, okay, that word alone exemplifies that there are many, okay, more. It is also the business of making meanings with the use of technology. So this means that the ways by which students communicate has extended to the utilization of images, animations, gestures, music, and, sp and spoken as well as written language. So gone are the days where the only place to go to is a shop or a bookstore to buy what you need to finish a project. Now in the confines of a room or a corner, with internet helping, you can finish a project and share it to the world if it's good enough for it. Indeed, digital communication technologies and the choice of mode with which to create a course output have changed by leaps and bounds. So that it says, so it is easier now to search like before when we were still in college. So we have actually the library as our source of uh, information. But now there are really lots of uh, information we can find via internet. It's up for us to use them in accordance to our wants and needs, especially to you as students. And it's, good, it's a good thing also that we have this, what we call this uh, virtual class as of the moment for you to at least be involved in a thinking process. So moving on to the multimodal texts can be paper, okay? Examples are books, comics, posters. They are meant to be read and understood while 
holding or looking at them. Okay, there. So a multimodal text can be a paper in the form of book, comics, books, co comics, posters, and they are meant to be read and understood. Next one is multimodal text can be a digital. Uh, that's digital. Okay, like slides, slide presentations, like what I'm having right now, blogs or vlogs, web pages, short films, videos, media campaigns, or any that capitalizes on digital technology. Next, multimodal text can be performed live. So through interpretative dance, monologue, role play, among other ways that are executed in front of an audience. So that is live. Okay, when it is like, for example, it is being filmed, it's what we call pre-recorded, like what we're having in the 777 prayer. Okay. Multimodal text can also be transmedia. A transmedia where messages are conveyed through a combination of multimedia pla platforms like the media campaign. Like for example, can be performed live on stage, uploaded to social media, broadcasted live over the radio and printed on the school paper as well. So these media extensions are now possible if your intention is to reach out to a bigger audience and make an impact to your immediate community or to the much bigger online citizens of the world. Okay, another thing with transmedia, have the capacity to make simple stories be understood and interpreted differently and ultimately, if your message is truly compelling, it will inspire audiences. So the manner by which you will use technology depends on your level of proficiency with it. So as a college student, I believe it is safe to assume that you are already beyond slide presentations. By this time, you will already have done videos, must have uploaded and shared projects with the online community, must have communicated your take on a subject matter with a role play, or must have created an online store for the business. <laughs> at the very least, at this point in your life, you must have given it, given into the challenge that only way to thrive in school is to be technology savvy. When you say technology savvy, you are really good in using technology. Oops. So to successfully create a multi-model text, what are we going to do? So you, you should consider a few things like your purpose. Okay, your purpose means what you want to achieve with your texts, such as to inform, to inspire, or to elicit action. Your message is contained in the actual text you composed. Readers may mean fellow students. Oh, okay, so the third one is reader or readers may mean fellow students, parents, teachers, or whoever you think will appreciate your message. If your work is a form of a video or a live presentation, then you will have to think of who to appeal to, your, to for your viewers. So when you have a song or a jingle for your project, you are... Who are your target listener? That's why okay, the following can help you in producing your output. The first one is written or linguistic. So it refers to spoken and written language through vocabulary, structure, and grammar. Okay, like for example, we have here, just for example, the secret of making people like you. <laughs> so the content, may I read? Almost $500,000 was spent profitably to run key ads displaying this headline. 
it drew many hundreds of thousands of readers into the body of a people mover advertisement, one which by itself built a big business. Pretty irresistible, isn't it? Okay, from that word alone, from the, the paragraph being given, of course, the secret of making people like you. It's already something that would magnetize okay, or that would compel someone to read. Okay, the next one, I'll just be giving one more thing. So do you want, like, do you make these mistakes in English? Of course, for students like you, so you will be maybe visiting this one. So a direct challenge, now read the headline back, eliminating the word this. This, this word is the hook that almost forces you into the copy. What are these particular mistakes? Do I make them? Also notice as with many of the other headline review that this one promise to provide helpful personal information in its own context, not merely advertising talk. The traction of the specific. In this first breather, let us stop to impress upon your mind how significant a part the specific plays in so many good headlines. It appears in many of our first 10, and it will appear in a sur surprising number of the next 19. You will see how magnetically it helps to draw the reader into the, into the body of matter of an ad advertisement. So notice as you continue reading how many of these headlines contain specific words or phrases that make the ad promise to tell you how, here's, this, which of this, who else, where, when, what, and why. Also, Note frequently exact amounts are used. Number of days, evenings, hours, minutes, dollars, ways, types of. So this attraction of the specific is worth your special attention, not only as relating to words and phrases, but also concerning headline ideas themselves. For example, compare the appeal of will help you make more money with will help you pay the rent. Or which of which? Is it the first one or the second one? Do you think will, would appeal to you? Is it the first one or the second one? <laughs> Come on, you can, you can react, by the way. No one? Okay, from the text alone, from the headline alone, alone you have already the opportunity if you will continue reading the particular ads or not. Okay, it depends on the construction of the headline. Okay, proceeding to second one, audio. Okay, after the written or linguistic, we should also consider the, the audio. So audio refers to music, sound effects, noises or silences, and the elements of volume, pitch, and rhythm. So maybe you're thinking, how important is audio to an advertisement or to an ad? Okay. So I will show you, or I will be letting you hear one of those who are uploaded here. Convention of. So that could also be, that could only be an odd. Simple audio, okay. So I want you to hear this. I'll be putting it into my mic. My... Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's an ad. Sorry, I'm so sorry for that. Okay, this one. Okay, that is, this is. And the Slip Back by Wolf Tooth. So the following are tracks that are recommended for advertisement use. Try listening to them. So this is Slip Bank by Wolf Tooth. Okay, is it engaging? Thumbs up. Can you please uh, strike the bottom thumbs up if it if this is a, a striking music for an advertisement? What can you say? 
does it add to the life of an advertisement? I think Rizelle, Rizelle has provided her thumbs up. Okay. So moving on, I have just uh, given you one example of those commercial corporate and advert, advert music that would really give. So just imagine when you are, like for example, you're, you're filming a horror movie do you think it will be appealing to your watcher or viewer if there is no sound effect or there are no sound effects? Of course not, right? Who would be willing to watch your movie without sound effects? Okay, the third one to consider is visual. Okay, after the audio, we need also to consider visual. So it refers to moving or still images with the utilization of colors, layouts, screen formats, symbols, shot framing, distance, angle, camera movement, and subject movement. Okay, those are the components of visual. Example is this one. Okay, powerful images of all time. So this is Oscar, an Oscar selfie 2014, which is considered one of the powerful images of all times. Okay, you can find it there. Then the second one is, who uh, wants to guess who is that particular boxer of all time? So he is Muhammad Ali versus Sonny Liston. So the one being knocked out is none other than Sonny Liston, but the one who won, we have Muhammad Ali. Okay, there you go. The third thing to consider is gestural. So gestural refers to body movements, hand and eyes, facial expressions. I'm so sorry, I haven't. Yeah, there you go. Body movement, hands and eyes, facial expressions, diminor, speed, stillness, and angles. So for us to, okay. Examples, we have the, the peace sign. Okay, for other cultures, that is, they have different meaning. Okay, some things really never change. The same peace sign, the heap is used at Woodstock is popular with kids today. Okay, the second image, this one. This one. This one. Okay, it is... It looks like a peace sign, but notice you see the back of the fingers, not the front. That's rumored to be equivalent, equivalent of the middle finger in Britain. Okay, so that is not really a good shot. What's this? Okay, and this one over here. We have the V sign. Then again, for some kids, it's just a peace sign. So don't jump to conclusions. Okay. Okay, I will erase. Okay, how about this? Of course. There you go. So this is about the heart. Looks like a heart, doesn't it? That's because it is. This generally means I love you. So, and for Koreans who have really presented themselves like this, so it's the oppa oppa sign, okay, the love sign. Okay, that's an example. Okay, let's now proceed to the special. Okay, special refers to the environmental and architectural spaces, proximity direction and overall organization of objects in a given space. Okay, wasn't able to download the following examples in their design. So if you are to really look for an architecture or design, so of course you can see the con congruency, the, the balance, the, the motif, the theme, okay? 
So you consider also special or the place. So how to get good selfie lighting at home? Okay, this is a freebie already being given by our book, being provided rather by our book. So how to get selfie home lighting at home? Okay, I'm very sure that you are all have the, we call this, we have all the interests in, in things like this. So with camera phones constantly evolving and photo editing and sharing apps like Instagram taking over, one thing is clear. The selfie is an easily accessible art form that here to stay. So you may as well learn how to make them right. And whether you're going for silly or serious, one of the biggest factors contributing to snapping the perfect selfie is lighting which you can achieve easily at home with these tips from professional photographers. Let's see, number one. Number one is the bigger, the better. So Homong here wants to have small. <laughs> of course, we'll always aim for bigger because it's better. So when it comes to photo lighting, bigger is actually better. A big diffuse surface as opposed to a small exposed bulb is ideal for selfie taking according to portrait photographer Sarah Slob Sloboda. Sloboda, who literally wrote the book on selfies, also suggested, suggested getting a collapsible reflector from a camera store if you really want to up your selfie game since it's collapsible, it can be put away when not in use so as to not affect your decor. For lighting that both photographs well and looks good in your home, try using long cylindrical lampshades. Uh, so if you, have, if you don't have this collapsible, what do you call it? It's collapsible light, lighting, so you can use, uh, what's this? Long cylindrical lampshades. Okay, that's the first. The second one, keep lights at eye level. So to put your best face forward, your lighting needs to be on your level. According to Stoboda, you want the light source to be coming from eye level because it's the most flattering for faces. So lighting from even slightly above can create circle around the eyes and from below makes you look like you're in a horror movie. So Sloboda said her advice, think of your face as a vertical line and make sure the surface of your light source is parallel to it. Like for example, like when we're having a Zoom meeting, just take a look with my face. Okay. It should be eye level. So there's the camera, you're here. So parallel. Okay. The third thing to consider face your light source. Along with keeping your lighting at eye level, you want to make sure you're facing the right direction when you take selfies to make the most of the light. Wedding photographer Merinda Edmonds suggested facing the light and making sure the light is going towards your nose. Then angle your camera to be face down slightly and snap. Okay, the fourth one, consider your background. Of course, you need also to consider your background. Even though you have a good selfie, if you don't have a good background, then that's nothing. Your background can only have can also have an impact on your photos. If you have white walls or white tile, or for example, the light coming in will reflect back into your face. But if you have strong colors around you like blue, red, or green, those colors will leave a color on your face that you might not like, according to Edmonds. Keep that in mind before you selfie. If you have a room with softer colors, that you can take photos in instead, that's probably the better choice. Okay, you, co you consider also the complementary. For example, your background is light, so you should be wearing dark colored shirt or dark colored clothes. 
But if it's dark, then you should also consider the color of your shirt. And then number five, take advantage of the natural light. So both photographers agree natural lights that soft and diffuse is always best. If you have a window that lets in indirect light, direct light won't work as well for photos. Face the window when taking selfies, it will create that power line that Sloboda suggested and it's flattering for all complexions. Edmonds also suggested standing in an overhang if you're outside so that natural light can reflect directly on your face. If you want to get a little more creative with yourself, the lighting, Sloboda suggested trying partial side lighting, which is a classic portrait lighting setup. You can create Rembrandt, Rembrandt lighting, like the painter by angling your face to one side or another. You'll know how you have it right when you see a distinct triangle of lights on your cheek on its shadow side of your face, so the triangle. And then, of course, the last one, camera quality matters. You probably notice a quality difference in photos taken with an actual camera. Your phone's default rear-facing camera and your phone's front-facing camera. You can make up for the poor quality of your front camera with good lighting because it will reduce gray, graininess, according to Edmonds. She also said you should make sure to wipe your front camera clean before taking selfies. So you need to have a good and clean camera lens. Sweat and makeup can get it away and reduce the crispness and clarity of your images. If you're up for a challenge with a little trial and error, you can take selfies and portraits with an actual camera or your rear-facing camera instead, as Sloboda suggested, since it will produce a clearer image. On the other hand, if you want a softer selfie, your front-facing camera will do just fine, according to Sloboda. The lower quality in front Facing camera can mask flaws and imperfections like lines and blanches. Like for example, for my phone, okay, you could see here my phone. That's it. Okay, you could see that okay. there is this particular part. Okay, there you go, the circle part. Whenever you press it, it will look like. It makes the light brighter and lighter. Okay, you could also he you could also see here the the shutter, yeah, the shutter image. Okay, that's it. So the the quality of your camera will also have a, a bearing. Okay, so I think so. Do you have any? more to say or any reaction so i'm done with my part okay everyone what do they have something to say <laughs> any reaction 